Now, the benevolent ministries that meant most to him, of course, were first of all the pastor's college. Uh, he founded the pastor's college as a result of training one particular person. Uh, this uh, man had been converted and had begun to, uh, had actually been converted in a, in a, in a, a hyper-Calvinist church. He came to Spurgeon to speak with him. He gained assurance of his salvation through Spurgeon. And T.W. Medhurst uh, was his name, and he began to uh, preach on the corners, preach outside. The people from the pulpit would come by and see him preaching. They'd go in to talk to Spurgeon and say, you can't let him do this. It's an embarrassment. He just has, he has no skills. He's just ranting. He said, this, if, if people learn that this is one of our members, they said, what will they think? And Spurgeon would talk to him about it, and he says, oh, I cannot, I can't stop preaching. He said, I have got to go. The Lord has saved my soul. I've got to tell other people that, uh, that this is what God, this, God saves you. God, God forgives your sins. You have a knowledge of God through the gospel. I have to tell them. And so Spurgeon said that rather than stop him, that he would train him. So he took him on personally uh, to train him for a while, then sent him to a friend of his that had uh, tutored ministers before. And as a result of the teaching of T.W. Medhurst, there were others that began to come to Spurgeon and say, we would like to be trained too. And so he would test them and see if they had gifts. Some had better gifts than others, but all of them, he believed, had a genuine call and had been given a gift for the communication of the gospel. And so out of that, the pastor's college uh, developed. Uh, eventually, there was a special building that was built for it, and hundreds of graduates came through the pastor's college. I did a comparison one time of the, of the numbers of students that had graduated and were in pulpits from the pastor's college compared to the numbers that came from Southern Seminary uh, at the same time uh, during those years, and Spurgeon was graduating and had people in, in pulpits uh, about twice the number of those who had come from Southern Seminary during those, those same years. So this was really quite uh, an, an enterprise. Some of his most Notable writings that are probably the most popularly read today come out of lectures that he gave at the pastor's college. Uh, he loved to go there on Fridays. He, sometimes he would teach, but mainly the instruction was for, uh, through other people. Uh, but on Friday, he would go and he would deliver a lecture, uh, and then he would take questions. These Friday sessions were some of the favorite things that he did. And of course, if you've read lectures to my students, uh, this is what was going on. It was the Friday lectures that he gave at the pastor's college, and it's, it's tremendous material. It has to do with the how to choose a text, how to deliver a sermon. He has expen uh, defenses of expository preaching. He has uh, uh, discussions about uh, insecurities that ministers have, uh, uh, the minister's fainting fits. Uh, he has illustrations about how to do uh, gestures. So, so there are some hilarious lectures that he gave about how to do gestures, and he would always mimic the ones that he thought you should never use. So these were just sort of times when Spurgeon was able to, to really uh, be free with all of his wit and, and the experience that he was consistently gaining and the marvelous gifts that he, that he had uh, concerning just... Uh, I think God-given instincts about preaching and about uh, communication. Uh, it, if you, you read those, I think you'll get a lot of really good wisdom uh, about preaching from the standpoint of, of its technique, but also, also from the standpoint of the uh, seriousness in preparation and in theological knowledge and in biblical knowledge that goes along with preaching.